Hello, Earth Angels, and welcome back to another episode of Alignment Academy. It's your host, Kristen. And if you're new here, I just want to say a warm welcome. I'm so happy you found your way to the podcast. It's definitely not an accident. I feel like everyone that comes here is divinely guided here. If you're new to my work, I'm a spiritual mentor, intuitive guide, mindset coach, and I really am passionate about helping people get out of their own way and learn to play the game of life better so that they can actually experience the life, the reality, everything that they actually truly desire from a soul level, not an ego level, a soul level. So that's a little bit about me. We talk about everything from spirituality, mindset, personal growth, uh, boundaries, self-worth, confidence. It's really just a great place to start if you're wanting to live a more fulfilled and aligned life. Alignment is like one of my biggest values and I really believe that when you're in alignment, you do have everything that you desire. And that's kind of been the journey that I've been on in the last you know, almost 11. No, well, I started my spiritual journey when I was 17. I'm 29. So the last 12 years uh, has just been, you know, a journey back to my true self, my authentic self, my most aligned self. And what I've realized is that when you do just put alignment over everything, you are naturally going to be exactly where you're meant to and have everything that your soul, again, truly desires. I'm really excited for today's episode because I'm about to talk about some things in a way that I don't think I've ever talked about them on the podcast. And I think it's going to really click in for you guys. I just intuitively feel that this is going to be the exact thing that you need to hear in order to really make the shifts and the changes that you need to make. So before we even get into the episode, the most exciting thing that I have coming up is on today, the day that this is coming out, my second round of my signature program, Inner Work Alchemy, is officially open for enrollment. I have just finished, when I'm recording this, the first round of Inner Work Alchemy. And to say that this program is special is truly an understatement. It is some of the most important work that I've ever done in my entire life. And you know, most of my programs, they had like a little bit of inner work in it, or it was like half inner work, half this. But the fact that I just created a program that's completely inner work focused to help you guys do the deep, deep work, because inner work is not something that you can just scratch the surface of. It's something that you need to learn how to deeply do. I mean, my clients got such amazing results in this. The transformation to see them going from lack of confidence to feeling really confident in their purpose, not having any boundaries or not really knowing who they are to feeling so empowered. But most importantly, I had so many people be like, I actually have the tools to work through my shit. And I, before I didn't, before I felt like I just was like floating through life. And so I'm really, really excited for this program. It's an eight week program. There are eight live teachings followed by live meditation. So every week we get on a call for about an hour and a half. I teach for the first 45 minutes. And then the last part of the call, we do a live meditation as a group. And so for example, we might be learning shadow work and then we do a shadow shadow work meditation. So it is a really beautiful program. It's super affordable too. And if you get in on the first two days there, which is today, there is a little bit of a discount. So if you're interested in enrolling, you can find the link below. I would love to have you in there. That's kind of the biggest update in my world. I will say this is not for you if you're not ready to take radical responsibility for your life. The things that come up in these types of containers when we're excavating all of the gunk that has been sitting in our subconscious for years, I'm not going to say it's all beautiful. Like there were actually a lot of hard and heavy weeks in inner work alchemy. But as a teacher and as the guide that's kind of guiding them through the experience. I have been through this on my own quite a bit and I know that it only is hard because it's going to get better. Like the only way is through sometimes with the inner work. And so if you are somebody who has already dove into their trauma a bit and has done, you know, a lot of layers, but is just looking for that deeper layer of learning how to work through it consistently with yourself, especially if you want to work through it for the purpose of stepping more into alignment, more into your purpose, more into your mission, then this is really going to be the space for you. I'm just really, really excited. And it's only open until five days it's open and then we start. So it's a pretty quick turnaround. If you're even considering, I would suggest, you know, doing your research and hopping in now. Again, there 
there is a little pre-sale price available today if you're listening on Monday or Tuesday, I believe. Just wanted to update you guys on that. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the episode. I think what I really want to say is that as you evolve on your spiritual journey, you're going to realize that there's only two ways to live your life. I've been learning a lot from my spiritual teachers, which are, you know, right now Yogananda, Michael Singer, and the more that I learn from them, the more that I'm seeing that this inner work, the inner world is so important and is really the only thing that we need to worry about. So back to my first point, there's two ways that you can live this existence, that you can live your 3D reality. And the first way is by trying to control every single thing around you so that you can feel at peace in your heart, so that you can feel in flow, so that you feel good inside, right? I want to control how they perceive me. I want to control the circumstances. I want to control how my night goes. I want to control this. I want to control that because anything that might disturb me, I, I, I don't want to feel that inside. The second way to live your life is to realize that This external world is just a mirror to what's going on in here and you actually don't have any control of what's going out on going on out here, but your only work is to control what's in here. Because the truth is, is that we're all wearing our own colored glasses and viewing the world through that lens, right? And It's why when I put rose colored glasses on, I see everything with rose. And when I put brown colored glasses on, I see everything with brown, right? Like I am going to see the world through my own view of things. Now, the way that you actually experience the most peace and the most alignment and the most just true connection in this life is by just dealing with your own triggers, your own disturbances versus trying to control the external reality. And I think the hard part about this is it does require you to have this deeper connection to source, this deeper connection to God, and actually a innate trust that everything is perfect, right? A couple episodes back, I, I shared this this saying that my friend Madeline told me that's called like Ishvara Pradidana, and it means surrender to God, but underneath surrender to God, it operates under the fact that it all is divinely perfect. And you know, I've shared with you guys a lot. I used to be a very, very big control freak in my life. I wanted to control my external reality. And now looking back at all these past versions of myself, I can see so clearly that the reason that I needed or wanted to have such deep control of my reality was because I kind of felt alone in this life. I kind of felt like, well, God is not paying attention to me or God's not doing it all. So I have to do it all right, which is, you know, just kind of created from deep conditioning of feeling unsafe from a very young age or feeling like I'm alone in the world, which I've done so much work on since to surrender and trust, which is why I teach it so much, because when you are living in a world where you feel like you are not held and you are not taken care of. You are truly miserable for a lot of your existence. And the thing is, is that this deep inner work to live in a state of true peace does require radical responsibility because when you decide, okay, instead of dealing with controlling with the world, I'm just going to deal with myself, you realize that any disturbance you're experiencing, any trigger you're experiencing oh my God, it's just a reflection of you. It's just coming back to you. It's not that there's anything wrong with reality, right? And like, I also wanna really have that perspective shift for you that reality just is. It doesn't have any feelings about what it is. It's like there's a tree here and there's plants all around. I'm looking at the ocean and it's not a negative or positive thing. It's my view of it that's creating the negative or positive experience, right? It's a beautiful sunny day today and it's and, and reality is not like, oh, look, the weather is good. Like the weather just is. I'm assigning the meaning that the this is good to me, right? And so when you really see that any problem that you're having is just reflecting back what you are experiencing inside well it's honestly a little bit jarring because now you have to take responsibility for everything and number two it seems like it's 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 a lot of work but the truth is it's actually a lot less work than you think because trying to control every little thing in your existence think about how exhausting that is oh now the weather is good well now I'm worried about when the weather is not good because when the weather is not good I'm gonna have to find a way to make it good again so I feel better. But if I just decide I'm going to feel good no matter if it's raining, shining, whatever, 
oh my gosh, do you see how much freedom that gives me just to be happy, just to be content with life? And honestly, it's so funny how this is all coming full circle because the last two years of my life have just been such a deep black dark night of the soul it was one of the biggest lessons i had to experience of just choosing to be happy no matter what the circumstances were okay i have no friends right now i have to choose to be happy okay my my ex-boyfriend just broke up with me i have to choose to be happy it's like i can't only be happy if this person comes back or if these people want to be my friend it's like i have to choose that happiness for myself and so that's the other thing I really love about inner work alchemy too is that the way that we start it is we give the foundation of what God is and why it is such a divine intelligence. And I want to remind you guys that the same God that is governing your life is the same God that is created worlds. It's the same God that is growing the fingernails on your fingers. It's the same God that is growing the plants and the trees and the leaves and making sure the sun comes up and the sun goes down. Like, do you do all that? Do you control all that? Are you making sure that happens? No, of course you're not. You are just kind of trusting in the sun, right? You're just trusting that your fingernails are going to grow and your hair is going to grow and and your body is going to function in the way that it's meant to. And so my question for you is that if everything has and always has been perfect, why are you trying to control your life as it's not already perfect? And so it's interesting. It's like this balance between deep surrender and trust and also working with your reflections, working with your triggers so that you can experience better reflections or the reflections that you prefer, right? There's nothing's better or worse, but the reflections that you prefer. So just to kind of segue this, you know, we talked about the two options for living your life and how everything is just a reflection of you. But I also want to just talk a little bit deeper about reflections because this is something that we're going to go into in very in-depth in inner work alchemy around like learning how to read your reflections and learning how to read your patterns, right? Because if you're getting a reflection that you don't like, but you don't actually have the tools, which is usually what happens with people, like they get triggered, their friend is triggering, but they don't have the tools to unpack the trigger, find the root, find the pattern that keeps on reliving and remanifesting and actually go heal it subconsciously. Well, then then you're just stuck in this trigger, right? Then you're just stuck in this loop and you're going to keep remanifesting because that's kind of like the information that's in your electromagnetic field. So this is also kind of a good time to talk about your electromagnetic field we all are more energy and less matter than you believe you are, right? I mean, Joe Dispenza always says, the odds that you're seeing the truth of this reality is zero. Most of energy, most of what is here is such a little part of reality. And so that means that a lot of reality is just energy in the field. And every single person has an electromagnetic field around their body that is giving signals out to this algorithmic universe that is really helping them get the reflections, right? You guys know I've had friendship stuff or whatever. It's like there was something in my electromagnetic field that was feeling worthy of people not treating me right. And so I was getting that reflection back. And until I learned how to change the energy in my field, change the pattern, change the information, I'm not going to get a new reflection in my field. And so that's kind of what I mean by this process is instead of trying to control other people and saying, fuck that girl and she's a bad friend and blah, blah, blah. I have to look inside, which is a lot of ego shedding and say, what is it in me that is attracting this experience? What am I doing? What am I believing? What am I maybe saying to myself that is giving me this reflection back? And again, it's so important to understand the science and kind of the energetic information around this because when you do, now you don't play a victim to your life. You actually can play the game better and get new reflections. And I think that that is like one of the biggest things that this inner work world and a lot of these coaches are missing is they're not really teaching their clients how to read the patterns in their life and understand how to be their own healer and again that's why I love inner work alchemy because it's really designed to give the tools and put the tools in your hands so that you don't need to hire someone and book a session every time you're having a trigger you actually have the tools to excavate that on your own and do the subconscious healing work and the reason I keep on bringing subconscious healing work up is because because here's the thing, guys, your subconscious mind is responsible for 95% of your existence and your conscious mind is 5% of your existence. That means that even if I say I want to start my business, but then 
let's say I'm procrastinating super freaking heavy. Okay, well, that's because your conscious mind wants to, but your subconscious mind, which is actually driving the ship of your life, is like, I'm scared of failure. I'm scared of being made fun of. I'm scared of being cringe. Well, I need to stay safe so I can't start the business. I have to procrastinate so I can stay safe to really validate these beliefs in myself. So until you go down into the subconscious mind, reprogram those beliefs that say, I am worthy. I am still beautiful and worthy and loved. Even if I fail, I am still capable of everything that I desire. Okay. Now until you rewire these subconscious beliefs to support what you want to do, now you can go take the action. It is kind of a skill. That's what I really love about inner work is that it is a skill. So that means the more you do it, the better you get at it. The more that you practice reading your own patterns, changing the information in your field, um, rewiring your subconscious mind, now you are going to just truly be able to see the reflections that you prefer. And you might be sitting here thinking about your life and saying, Kristen, I don't see how this is my fault, right? Like my friends are judging me for starting my business and all I'm trying to do is I'm a good person. I'm here, I'm having a pure heart and this was me, right? I was like, why are people being mean to me? Why are people, you know, making fun of me for starting my business? Why are they judging me? And what I realized is, oh, okay, so if I'm experienced, someone else is judging me. I can flip that around and say, how am I judging myself? Or how am I feeling like the work that I'm doing isn't good enough right why like that's basically judging and so whatever you're kind of doing to yourself or believing you're worthy of you're always going to get that reflection back as well quick little interruption to share with you guys a testimonial from inner work alchemy i am so proud of this particular client because inner work alchemy is a intensive it means that if you really put your heart and soul into it you are going to get massive results by the end of the eight weeks and have a newfound confidence self-worth really be attracting better reflections in your life and operating from basically a whole new person In this program, we do around three to five inner work meditations a week that are really going to help you reprogram your subconscious mind so you can operate from higher self-worth and create new neural pathways. And here's what she had to say. Hey, my name is Allie Banks and I am a mindset and manifestation coach. And I just finished inner work alchemy with Kristen. It was life-changing. Like there's just no other way to say that. Um, I struggled for about two years after I decided I wanted to start my business It brought up so many triggers um, and trauma that I didn't realize that I hadn't worked through. To be honest with you, I really struggled with like showing up online, posting videos, um, and using my voice. It just all of that was like such a trigger for me. And in Inner Work Alchemy, we worked through all of that. She has the most amazing meditations that really help you go deep and feel safe and feel comfortable um, and release the energy that's no longer serving you. So I cannot recommend it enough. I just wrapped the program and now I have started a podcast. I'm posting regularly and I'm having one-on-one sessions with customers and clients and doing things that I literally like only dreamed of. Um, So thank you so much, Kristen. I am so grateful to like be able just to like stand in my own shoes and be powerful and feel confident um in a way that I was so um that I was just struggling to like step into for a really long time and this program completely transformed me so I really appreciate it And I think I'm just going to kind of end this episode with giving you guys like a few examples of how this really manifests. I have a lot of my clients and future clients, they they feel like they have this big mission, this big purpose, and they do because a lot of, I mean, if you like my work, you're definitely a light worker of some sort, of some capacity. And it's like this feeling of, I really think I have this big mission. I, I know that I'm here to do big things, but why aren't I doing it? I have things that are getting in the way. I'm so scared of judgment. The truth is, is that when you are on the journey, need to follow your soul's purpose well your soul's purpose is your highest timeline in this lifetime right so me living my soul's purpose i just know that i'm on my highest timeline because really a lot of us came on earth to help raise the vibration of the planet and like 
our mission was the most important reason why we came, right? And so the thing that you have to remember, okay, if it's your highest timeline, it's typically also your hardest timeline, most challenging timeline, most things that you have to transmute in the process of you living your soul's purpose. And so a lot of people, they try to go start their business. They try to go, you know, do do the hard thing. And they wonder why every little thing is triggering them. Why am I struggling with fear of judgment? Why am I procrastinating? Why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? These are all initiations until your highest timeline and onto your next level. And the reward for you transmuting them is everything that you desire, right? And source also is not mad at you if you don't transmute at all. It's not mad at you if you choose to not go on the highest timeline because the truth is, is that there's no rush in eternity. Like you're going to get there if it's in this lifetime or the next one or the next one or the next one or the next one. But my thing is that you're going to have to master it eventually. So why wouldn't you just choose this lifetime to master it so you can experience more peace, right? Because your soul knows where it's supposed to go. So a lot of times the soul won't feel the deep peace until it's actually on mission and in alignment, right? We talk about alignment a lot, but I haven't defined it for you guys. Alignment is this like deep, deep inner knowing that like you're on the right path. That's why when we know we need to break up with someone or we know we need to move somewhere, we feel this like subtle feeling of misalignment or we know this job's not good for us. It like feels, uh, I can't really explain why, but I just, I just feel like this isn't it. And that is really the feeling that we have to get so comfortable kind of navigating with because for me the reason why I'm so obsessed with alignment everything's called alignment academy is because the way that I have really decided to live my life has been when things feel slightly off I make a change when things feel slightly off I I look inside I make a change I do what needs to be done I do the healing so that I can get back into alignment because I know that's when I'm going to flow with the universe the best so just to even show you guys some of the topics that we cover in inner work alchemy we do higher self synchronization and we learn laws of the universe so we can understand how the universe is kind of like playing the game so we can learn how to play the game better. We do inner child work, perfectionism and procrastination work. We go into shadow work, friendship wound, father wound, boundaries and people pleasing. And then we do a closing ceremony at the end where we tie everything up in a bow. And everything really builds on itself to help you go deeper and deeper. But just to give you guys like some examples, like let's say you are procrastinating on your soul's purpose and you're not doing what you need to do. You're on the consistency roller coaster. You're struggling with perfectionism. Well, the root of all of that is you feel that you will only get love if you show up perfectly because that was a pattern you saw in your childhood that you only got praised when you showed up perfectly or whatever. And so until you really rewire your subconscious mind to show yourself that okay I actually love myself no matter if I'm perfect imperfect perfect doesn't even exist I am worthy of love no matter what now you're going to feel safe enough to show up imperfectly and so we do a lot of safety work in the beginning to show our brain and body that no matter what trigger when no matter what disturbance is going on I am safe and I can handle it again it all comes back to seeing the patterns and the root cause of, of, of all these things You also might be experiencing attracting unavailable partners or not being able to find uh, like masculine men or it maybe even only attracting men with like super leaky energy that like disrespect you or only want to hook up. Well, you need to look at your reflections with the masculine, with the father wound, right? Maybe you had a father that cheated on your mom or your fa- your father was never that safe container or maybe he wasn't emotionally available to you in the way that you needed. And so now that's kind of what your subconscious believes that you deserve. And so until you rewire your subconscious mind to show your unconscious mind what the divine masculine looks like and how you deserve to be treated you're going to continue to attract that reflection I think it's interesting because I heard the statistic the other day around like relationships and divorce it was like if you've got divorced once the odds of you getting divorced again are like very high and I'm like well yeah that's because people don't know how to read their patterns and heal it right it's like if you actually learned from that experience and people knew how to learn from their reflections that they're getting in their life then they wouldn't be attracting the same thing over and over and I think that that's one of the best things about learning how to do this inner work is that when you really understand okay any pattern I'm seeing I can change I just have to change the information the other one is like boundaries right like if you are experiencing a lot of people crossing your boundaries you have to look at the reflection and say where am I crossing my own boundaries where do I believe that I'm my needs are not worthy of being 
met and reprogram that with inner child work. And if you're new to inner child work, you don't know what inner child work is. When I say reprogram that with inner child work, the process, I'm going to give you guys like a super small synopsis, is really finding the root of where that pattern started. So you might have had a mom that forced you to do things even when you it wasn't best for you to do. So like, let's say you're sick, but it was your sister's birthday. And then you have to like, you have to go to your sister's birthday. That's unconsciously telling you that other people's needs are more important than your own. And so what would happen is you would grow up and you would just keep on attracting the reflection of other people's needs being more important than your own. And since that's your belief, you would be playing into that. And then you'd also be experiencing that of not setting boundaries or just thinking that other people are more important than you. And then with inner child work, what we do is we go to that version of yourself, whether she's five or 10 or 15, or, you know, sometimes I even do inner child work on my 27 year old self, which is two years ago. We go back to that version of us and we give that version of us what we needed, but we never got right. So you actually probably needed a mom that said, honestly, your needs are the most important. You can't give from an empty cup. Why don't you rest? Do what's best for you. And I will be out there at your sister's birthday party, but you need to rest and stay here. So we go give that to that inner child. Obviously, this is all while we're in the subconscious mind. I bring you guys down to theta with my hypnosis. And then what happens is there's a new neural pathway that's forming that's going over and over the old one that allows you to show up differently in your life. Because when there's such a deep neural pathway, it's really hard to change consciously. That's why our conscious mind can't just say, I want to put myself first. It's like, no, it's so deeply ingrained in you that other people are more important than you. So you can't put yourself first. But once you do that deep subconscious healing, the root of that is so much less deep like we really like lessen the deepness of it I don't I know that's not good English but you guys get what I'm saying that we're actually able to see the pattern clearly we bring the unconscious pattern conscious and now we can choose a different route without it feeling super unsafe to choose that Um, and that's a really a lot of 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 what I think healing is is making the unconscious conscious this was an unconscious pattern I didn't realize and now I'm going to make it conscious so that I have a, a choice point right there's no choice point if it's not conscious really hear that like if you are doing something unconsciously there's no way that you can choose to do something different but the second that you choose to make the unconscious conscious you create a choice point for yourself and you can go on a completely new timeline and so it's really cool to see all your patterns because now you weren't setting boundaries you were attracting unavailable men maybe your friends were treating you like shit but now that you know that this is an unconscious pattern that you were calling in over and over and over again when you're making friends when you're on dates now you have a choice point I'm not going to go for the same guy that I always go for and then think it's going to give me a different result I'm going to demand more for myself and then now you're going to get a better guy because you're not settling for what you've always settled for shadow work is a really really big one right shadow is like anything that you feel shame for so if you are wanting to make more videos online or make YouTubes, but you're scared of being cringe or you're scared of being made fun of, that's all shadow. It's all shame that we don't want to feel because someone else has shamed us in the past and we don't want to feel that again. Or if you feel shame for what you look like, if you feel shame because you're quote unquote fat, if you feel shame for and the reason I'm saying this with so like fat's not a bad word, right? It's like it's the charge that we put on it. Meaning think about it, fat, skinny, ugly, pretty. These are actually neutral words, but it's our conditioning and what we made them mean that makes it bad. And so with shadow work, what we're doing is we're taking the charge out of a lot of these triggering words so that when other people call us cringe, when they call us ugly, when they call us a loser, when they call us a failure, it doesn't actually hurt us anymore because we're like, okay, well, I know who I am. And even though that word used to be shameful to be. I don't feel shame for being a failure because I know that, you know, as a human, I have the capacity to be a failure and a winner and I have the capacity to be unsuccessful and successful. And with shadow work, we really just like learn about encompassing our whole human spectrum and realizing that whatever judgments are people are making are really reflections of what they're judging within themselves. And so we're going to be covering shadow work, inner child work, but inner child work is really the basis of all of it. So I hope this got your wheels turning and really gave you some insight of how important it is to understand what you're doing, understand patterns, understand your electromagnetic field, and also understand that you are a creator and you have the power to change it if you are interested in inner work alchemy then feel free to enroll with the link below 
again, it's only open for five days and we do start the last week of August, which is, I'm looking at my calendar, I believe August 26th. The week of August 26th is when we're going to begin. So super, super excited for that. If you guys want me to expand on any of the topics that I talked about today, feel free to leave me a DM. And if this podcast episode was expansive for you in any way, if it really just helped you look at things differently, I would absolutely love if you guys uh, not only rated five stars on whatever platform you're listening, but shared it with a friend. Helping the podcast grow is like the best way that I can help this grow. Hopefully one day I have a studio and I can just like make it look even better and have even better guests on. So that's really the goal um, here. But as always, thank you guys for spending, you know, just a couple minutes with me this week. I literally am just obsessed with the podcast community. It's so good. I mean, even inside of Alignment Academy, the membership, like we just feel like a really close knit amazing cut from the same cloth community and uh, I just love you guys all so much I'm so happy that uh, we found each other in this lifetime and just immense gratitude for you I hope you guys have an amazing week and I will see you guys in the next episode and hopefully see a few of you inside of inner work alchemy all right bye